it is finally time. <clears throat> I've been putting this off for a little while because I've been doing some other jobs, building some other engines. Like this one over here, that's a 3.2 I've just rebuilt. Um, doing some other jobs for other friends. And finally, I'm going to do some work on my car, which is a 3 litre SC. So this is a 1979 model, and it's got the original motor in it, right here as you can see. It has been rebuilt once before, and it was upgraded to a 3.1 litre using 97 millimeter turbo barrels and some aftermarket pistons, which are the Max Moritz wedge style domes. Um, apart from that, the warm-up regulator and the fuel distributor have been rebuilt, and this runs beautifully. It's got a Monty muffler and a set of SSIs on it as well. So I figured today was the day. I won't put it off any longer. I'm going to start doing the removal of the engine and the plan is to convert this to EFI and to add a turbocharger at the same time. Why am I doing it? Oh, there's a, I think that's a B, hang on. <laughs> um, I've never had a turbo, never driven a turbo and I want to see what it's like and I want to see if I can do it. And the engine's in really good condition as it is so it doesn't need to be rebuilt right now. I mean I will rebuild it eventually but it doesn't need it, so I'm hoping that a turbo conversion will be fairly straightforward. And I'm going to make my own EFI harness. Haven't done that before either. Yes, I've done some EFI conversions using pre-made professional harnesses, but I want to see if I can make my own. And yeah, that's the idea. So stage one is to pull the engine and the transmission out, and then we'll get on with it. So this is going to take a while. I probably won't be uploading videos every day, every week. I'm sure I'll just save all the videos and then join them into one big long movie. Um, but as you see, I've, I've got it jacked up. I'm just draining all the oil at the moment and then I'll get this car up on some stands and I'll get the engine pulled. I'll update you when it's done. Okay, just a quick update. Um, I've disconnected all the oil lines underneath the car. I've drained all the oil of course, disconnected my two breathers on this side, as you can see they've been removed. Going to this side I've unplugged the 14 pin connector, uh, unplugged the power for the CDI, the voltage reg external voltage regulator and I've also undone my fuel line. So there's my drain back line from the accumulator, there's my supply line and there's the return line. So they're all undone and I've also disconnected the Throttle rod right off the top of the, the bell crank at the top here. That's a, a nice little trap sometimes that you forget. So that's all done. So now I just need to go underneath and disconnect some wires off the starter motor and the clutch and a few other bits and pieces. Back in a minute. Okay, quick update underneath the car. As you can see, I've removed the sway bar and obviously the drive shafts have been removed, undone. I've also disconnected my clutch cable. It's out of the way, as you can see. There it is. And I've removed the throttle rod, which is off that bell crank there. And I've popped off the, um, the linkage from the pedal. I've removed the clutch actuating arm off here. And underneath, I don't know if you'll be able to see under there, because it's dark, but under there, you can sort of see me pointing with my finger. I've removed the 13mm nut, which connects the battery cable to the starter motor. I've also removed the earth strap. So that's done, and the only thing to do now is to undo the gear shift linkage and the speedo connections inside the trans tunnel. And then we should be good to jack it up and remove the motor. Just so you can see, that's the condition of my motor underneath, like it's, it's dry. No leaks, SSIs, all nice. Runs beautifully, starts perfectly. And I'm probably going to ruin it by doing this conversion, but, you know, all for the sake of progress and fun, right? Whew, and there we go, 20 minutes later and the engine and transmission is out of the car. Pretty straightforward using a hydraulic table and some stands to get the car up pretty high. And I'm just using a adjustable uh, hydraulic motorcycle lift there just to give me support underneath the transmission so I can, you know, change the angle when I want to get it out of the transmission tunnel nice and cleanly. Um, but yeah, so now the next step is to separate the transmission and get this up on a stand. Give you a look, so 
you can see what sort of condition the motor's in. It's actually pretty nice. And there's my engine bay. I don't remember changing that, but I must have. <laughs> there you go. The sound pad I'm talking about there. Phew, well, that's me for the day. Um, okay, engine out, transmission just sitting there on the stand. That's the 3.2, I just finished rebuilding. The 3 litre out of my car is now sitting on the engine stand and ready for the next stage which is to remove the CIS. Um, I'm just going to, whilst this was not, this one actually wasn't rebuilt by me, um, but it was done pretty well. But I'm just noticing some sweating down there and it looks to me like the, the gasket there for the, oh what's wrong with that torch? Give it a whack. Ah. It's hard to find good help, isn't it? All right. Well, anyway, it's the gasket for the breather cover. So the, the, the engine breather cover just here, the gasket there looks like it's failing or whatever. So anyway, there's a bit of sweating out there. Apart from that, everything's in good condition. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'm not sure. I'm actually contemplating putting this in my car just for somewhere to put it. <laughs> Uh, worst case, I'll store it underneath the car so I'll give myself some space to work out here. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pick this up on the next video. Thanks for watching.